Summary of Refugee by Alan Gratz Refugee tells the stories of three children who have to leave their home countries because of war. To begin, there is Joseph, a Jewish boy who is 12 years old and lives in Germany in 1938. This is during the rise of Hitler and the Nazi party. The Nazis break into Joseph's house on Kristallnacht and take his father Aaron to a death camp. After six months, Aaron is allowed to leave the camp as long as he leaves the country right away. He, Joseph, Rachel, Joseph's mother, and Ruthie, Joseph's sister, all plan to get on the Mississippi St. Louis, which is taking Jewish refugees to Cuba. When Aaron, Joseph, Rachel, and Ruthie meet up with them on the ship, Joseph sees that his father is scared and paranoid because of what he went through in the concentration camp. Aaron is so scared that he won't go to the ship's synagogue to attend Joseph's bar mitzvah. He thinks that the synagogue is a trap set by the Nazis for the Jewish travelers. Two weeks after leaving Germany, the ship gets close to Cuba, where the people have to go through a medical checkup. Aaron starts to cry as he waits in line for the check because it makes him think of the roll calls at the concentration camp. To get his father to calm down, Joseph slaps him and tells him that the Nazis will get Aaron if he doesn't stay quiet. If his father doesn't believe him, Joseph slaps his father again. When Joseph does this, he sees that he has switched roles with his father and is now the family adult. The guests want to know when they will be able to enter Cuba after the medical check. When Cuban police talk, they say mañana, which means tomorrow. After a few days, Skyendik and two other Nazi soldiers break into Joseph's family's cabin, destroying all of their things and scaring Aaron again. Later that same day, Aaron tries to kill himself by jumping off the ship, but a Cuban police officer called Mariano Padron saves him and takes him to the mainland. It's been a week, and every day the Cuban cops keep telling the passengers that they can get off tomorrow. At the end of the week, Renata and Evelyn, two young girls, will be able to leave with their father, who already lives in Cuba. But the rest of the guests can't get off the boat. Joseph sees Officer Padron and asks if they can go to Cuba with Aaron. Padron tells Joseph that Aaron is not healthy enough to get on the ship and that the rest of the family cannot get off. Joseph is told by Padron that he is just doing his job. Next, the St. Louis heads north to beg the U.S. to let them in. On the way, Joseph and a group of men try to take over the ship by holding the crew hostage, but Captain Schroeder stops them. When they get to the U.S., the government turns them away, so they have to go back to Europe. As planned, Joseph, Rachel, and Ruthie are sent to France to start over. But eight months later, Germany invades France, and they have to run away again. They are caught in a small French town by the Nazis. Rachel offers them all of their money and jewelry, but the Nazis tell her she can pick one kid to free and one child to send to a concentration camp. Isabel is the second major character. She is an 11-year-old girl who lives in Havana, Cuba, in 1994, when Fidel Castro was president. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, which had been helping Cuba, there is a serious lack of food in Cuba, and many people are going hungry and are out of work. Some people try to get out of Cuba, but Castro has a rule that people who try to leave are jailed. Ernesto, Isabel's dad, tried to get away and got a year in jail for it. Now, when there are riots in Havana and a police officer says they will put Geraldo in jail again, he decides to leave the country the next day. That night, Castro changes his mind and lets people leave the country. She gets her mother Teresa, who is pregnant and due in a week, and her grandfather Lido to join her in going to the United States with Geraldo. The Castillos, who live next door and are also building a boat and plan to leave, offer to help her. Isabel gives her most valuable item, a trumpet, for gas so that they can leave that night. The boat is filled with Isabel, Teresa, Geraldo, Lito, Senor Castillo, Senora Castillo, and their son Yvonne, who is Isabel's best friend. On the beach, police watch them leave but don't do anything to stop them. Luis, the Castillo's other son, and his girlfriend Amara, who is also a police officer, quit their jobs and jump on the boat as it leaves for Miami. As they leave, the other police officers begin to shoot, and a bullet goes through the side of the boat. 
The boat starts to fill with water, and as they head toward Miami, they try to plug the hole. The journey goes on until the motor stops working and the water starts to come in faster. As they try to get away, Isabel starts to worry that she will not be able to connect with her Cuban roots now that she is in the US. A Cuban beat called clave is something she had never learned to count. She is not sure how she will learn it in Miami. In the late evening, a ship comes over the top of their boat. Even though they can avoid it, the fast-moving water in their boat takes their medicine, bandages, and matches with it. More than that, Senor Castillo is thrown off the boat, and Isabel jumps into the water to save him. The next day, a storm comes through and it pours down rain. During the storm, Isabel thinks of her grandma Lita, who died two years ago when a cyclone swept her out to sea and killed her. The next day, after the storm, the sun comes out and it's very hot. Teresa starts to feel sick. They are thrilled to have reached Miami when all of a sudden they see the shore. But when they get to the dock, an officer tells them they can't dock because they are in the Bahamas. Before they go back, some tourists give them food, drink, and aspirin to take with them on their trip. Isabel is very thankful for this. Along their trip, the boat starts to get more and more cracks. To make the boat lighter, they decide to take turns floating next to it. But then, sharks attack Yvonne while he's in the water. They bite and hurt his leg, and he dies when they can't stop the blood. When Isabel and her friend see Miami in the distance the next day, they are sad because their friend has died. A Coast Guard boat starts to head toward them as they row toward the shore. Then Lito admits that he was the Cuban police officer who turned Joseph and the other Jews away in Havana in 1939. Because he feels guilty, he chooses to give up his life so that the others can continue to Miami. He jumps off the boat and scares off the Coast Guard, which lets the others get to land. At the same time, Teresa starts to labor and gives birth as they get closer to the shore. It's possible for the Fernandezes and Castillos to get to Miami because Isabel is carrying her new brother. Her family stays with her uncle Guillermo, who is Lido's brother, until they can get back on their feet. As Isabel tries out for band, Guillermo gives her a new trumpet. When she plays the star-spangled banner in a salsa style, she learns that she can finally count clave. He is the third major character and is a 13-year-old boy who lives in Aleppo, Syria, in 2015. A civil war has been going on in Syria since the Arab Spring in 2011, and Aleppo is constantly being bombed. Mahmoud has learned to fit in and never be seen so that he can stay alive and keep his 10-year-old brother Walid safe. One day, bombs go off in their room. After this, Mahmoud and Walid, their mother Fatima, their father Youssef, and their baby sister Hannah all left to try to find safety in Germany. Syrian troops get into Mahmoud's family's car as they drive to Turkey, but they are quickly attacked. Mahmoud and his family have to get out of the car and walk eight hours over two days to get to the Turkish border. After that, they wait for a boat to take them to Greece in Turkey. They are always being ripped off. For example, a boy charges them to take them to a place to sleep and then gives them fake life jackets. The boat to Greece will be ready for Mahmoud and his family tomorrow, they are told every day. This goes on for seven days, leaving them tired and sad. They can finally take a boat to Greece, but they get thrown into the water during a storm. Youssef and Walid split from Mahmoud, Fatima, and Hannah, and the four of them float for hours. They are passed by another skiff, but Mahmoud and Fatima can't get on that boat because it's full. Mahmoud asks them to take Hannah because he is afraid she won't be able to stay alive if they have to stay in the water. They agree and take his little sister, which is a terrible loss for Fatima. After hours, the Greek Coast Guard finally saves Mahmoud and Fatima, and they meet up with Walid and Yusef again. They keep going until they reach Athens, Greece, but they can't find Hannah. The family drives through Macedonia without stopping and then takes a cab to Serbia. But the cab driver points a gun at them and demands money. After that, they walk the last part of the way to Serbia and then to Hungary. Guards at the border with Hungary attack them with tear gas and take them to a holding center, where they beat Yusef and call the Syrian refugees parasites and filth. 
After that, they are moved to a refugee camp. Mahmood tries to hide to stay out of more trouble, but then he realizes that the only way to get help is to be seen. He just walks out of the refugee camp, and the other people there do the same. The news finds out about them as they walk for 12 hours to get to Austria. Before they cross the border, a lot of Austrians meet them and give them food, clothes, and medical care. They still can't seem to find Hannah. Mahmoud and his family keep going to Germany, where they get refuge. They stay with a host family for a month while they start to build their new lives. Ruthie, who is now old, and her husband Saul are the hosts. They had to give up Hannah, and she hears Mahmoud's story. She tells him they will find her. Ruthie tells him her own story. She talks about how the Nazis caught her, Joseph, and Rachel in France. Joseph chose to go to the death camp so that Ruthie could get away. After that, Rachel and Joseph died in the camps. Mahmoud is upset, so Ruthie tells him that they died so that she could live. Muhammad is sad, but he is thankful that Ruthie lived so she could help him and his family. He's happy to have settled down in Germany. About the author. Gratz was born in Knoxville, Tennessee, and he received his education in creative writing from the University of Tennessee. Gratz's first book for young readers, Samurai Shortstop, came out 10 years after he graduated. Several history fiction books are among the 15 books he has written for young readers since then. Refugee was a New York Times bestseller for more than a year. Gratz also taught writing historical stories in Tokyo and Jakarta for a while. Besides plays and magazine pieces, he has also written a few TV shows and more than 6,000 radio commercials. Gratz lives in Asheville, North Carolina, with his wife and daughter. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.